All right, hi everyone, welcome back to Endwalker and SQ Progression. Ooh, Amanda, last time we finished the Tower of Zart, we saved everyone, everyone's happy, and we got a nice little scene with the Heart Bloom at the end. Ah, oh, there you are. Feeling refreshed, I hope? I was about to make my way to the studio as it happens. I wanted to try and speak with Skull out of Montechain and uh, uh, thank him for coming to our rescue in the Rostra. As it turns out, he come here to see us following the hearing, only to find that we'd already departed for Thadnair. Knowing him, he was probably hoping to chew the cud with his former students. Since we're still waiting for Shola and the others, I thought now the perfect time to pay him a visit. Care to join me? Alright, then it's settled. The twins will be coming too, assuming Alphino can tear himself away from this new toys. I'll let you rally the troops while I go on ahead to Phenomenon. Considering my recent impropriety, perhaps I should avoid showing my face around the student for a time. <laughs> Levitating spells because you can't get books. <laughs> it'll be honestly it'll be worse if that's cryo. That might be for the best. If the others should return, tell them we will not be long. Uh, okay, oh just gonna walk through me. Alright. Heading out for a stroll. The Skullock himself was here? <laughs> In that case, what are you waiting for? I too am eager to see him, though I somewhat dread the thought of visiting the studium. I dare say our notoriety precedes us. Alphino of all people worrying over his reputation. Oof, and out of armor Martin, no less. Uh, well, wonders never cease. You'll understand soon enough. Off we go. Let's -a go. Oh, what am I doing? Yeah, let's use that fancy new etherite system. Here it is, Phenomenon. While I expect you made note of it before, one could hardly miss it. This is the first time you've been here on official business, correct? While most of the space is taken up by the expansive auditoriums, it also houses numerous laboratories, testing grounds for experimental magics, and a host of administrative offices and so forth. As the center of what would later become the studium, it was established to promote the study of etherological phenomena, hence the name. Though with ether being a fundamental aspect of nature, its scope expanded to include every conceivable facet of life and even the universe itself. And then, in the 432nd year of the 6th Astral Era, Phenomena was decreed complete and the pseudonym officially opened as a place of learning. With a long and storied history, it is without question the world's leading authority in etherology. The arcane, the occult, astromancy, and countless other fields standing proud as Charlayan's foremost educational institute. <laughs> they memorize it. <laughs> you always did enjoy giving the grand tour to new students. How old are they? Like 18 now? Endwalker? Still 16? I have no idea. Indeed, I've long lost track of how many times he has recited that same foppish speech, such as his undying love for his old stamping ground. He was in top form back then, youngest to enter the studium, graduated with the highest honors in magical arts and etherology, and the sweet champion of the debating chamber. Uh, hold on. You both joined the studium at the same age, yes? And from where I stand, you're equally prodigious scholars. Nice of you to say, but Alphanode actually entered half a year before me. Nor did I do well enough to graduate with honours. And I'm certainly not the studium's most notorious master debater. <laughs> master debater. In all respects have I ever been in his shadow. If nothing else, just remember that this is where the legend of Alphanode every began. The will the legend? Oh, nobody's gonna get that. We should expect everyone to be fully aware of our recent escapades. Hopefully, we'll be somewhat more welcome here than we were at the last stand. I know better than anyone the adoration the student body has for Alphanode, and with a bit of luck, it might work to our advantage. Well, there's no time like the present. First things first, let's, for, let's look for Skolak Mountain Dew. Our facility tend to frequent their offices, but unfortunately for us, he's fond of wandering wheresoever his swims take him. Let's split up and ask the students if they've seen him and look for clues. Gang. Okay. That was Alphano Leveilleur, wasn't it? THE Alphano Leveilleur. Oh. And he's with the sister of Master Maldessian's granddaughter. Oh, this can only mean one thing. An event for ever shattering fortunes is fast approaching. Spread the word. Oh, 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 sorry. You said you're looking for the Skarlock, yes? Knowing him, he could be anywhere. But Miss Aliopo should have a better idea. Miss Aliopo? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Why is that? Why is that a What? What? I did not expect them to put a script exchange in a... 
in a learning facility but Slender haven't we seen you before somewhere in a distant past or maybe like two weeks ago in the same expansion oh well that's another idea po wait Wait, 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 would you happen to be related to Shiro and Kuro? Because that's how their names are apparently meant to be said because they're sisters and it's like white and black and they contrast each other and all that. Are you lost wandering off the street perhaps? Wait, don't tell me. You're a trainee cleaner fresh off the guild ship. <laughs> I'm right, aren't I? Oh, how silly of me. An orientation is in order. Um, mm, allow me to bid you a warm welcome to Searcher's Meet. Let me start with a question. What's the most important thing you'll find in the studio? That's right, books! And what's the second most important? Huh, why that simple? Everything else! That's what we deal in here at the Searchers Meet. Whenever the students or tutors find themselves in need of equipment or materials, they come to us. If we don't have it in our source, we send the gleaners off to find it. Honestly, you wouldn't believe some of the requests we get. Eye of Paisa this, Town of Giganto that. It's enough to make your hair stand on end. Which is possibly what some of our students are trying to accomplish. This being a school of magic and all, you know, the, the, the touch of magic orb and your hair goes... As our newest cleaner, you'll have your work cut out for you, but I think you'll find it quite rewarding. The only thing I'm interested in gleaning is information on the Skarlark's whereabouts. I beg your pudding. You're not a cleaner. This, this is all an elaborate ruse. No. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Come to think of it. You never actually claimed to be one in the first place. Oh, my mistake. He was here, but now he's not. Oh, imagine that. I did speak with him shortly before you arrived, though. He said he was on his way to make it meet. Okay, okay. Go back the way you came in, and you'll see it on the opposite side of the entrance. It's a laboratory of sorts, home to many rare and expensive curios, not to mention alarmingly frequent accidents. If you lose your way, just follow the blood curdling streams and the arrows on your map. <coughs> In the time it's taken me to tell you all of this, the scholar has probably already left. Uh, best of luck finding him. I have a feeling you'll need it. Oh god, he's one of, he's, it's one of those... Oh no. Mountain Dew, come back. I want to drink you. God, that sounds wrong. This is it, right? This is where the bloody screams are coming from. Ah, yes, the scholar was here for a while ago. He offered me a bias on my current research project. Though we spoke at length, I don't recall him mentioning where he was trying to go next. When we parted ways, he went down the corridor. Perhaps one of the auditoriums. There he is, but first the Vista. Ah, they're still using the old-fashioned double blackboards. Oh my god. Move with the times, get a projector already. Get a laptop, get a everything, man. Alright, here we go. What? Mountain... Ah, Mountain Dew. I remember you. Oh my god, voice cut lines. Cut lines. Ah, oh god, cutscenes still exist. Ah, there they are. I pray we have not caught you at an inopportune moment. We wanted to offer our thanks for your kind words in the forum. Who doesn't love Mountain Well, Dew? I could hardly let that Inquisition go unchallenged. I've always believed that curiosity should be nurtured, not stifled. Thankfully, a majority of my colleagues agreed. A slender majority, aye, but a majority nonetheless. <laughs> Turns out you're not referencing something. Had no? the vote not gone our way, we would be having a very different conversation, if any at all. Though I'd like to think you would have not given up on our cause. I'm told you paid a visit to the Annex afterwards. Yes, that's right. I was hoping to speak with the grandchildren of my dearly departed friends Gallif and Louisois in a less doer setting. But it seems I just missed you. Oh, <laughs> they're just looking for each other, what the hell? I still can't believe how much you've grown. If only your grandsires could have seen the way you presented yourselves to the forum. Why, if fair brought a tear to my own eye. Oh, oh he's friends with, oh. Man, he's he's about just as old as You Stenberg. must have the patience of a saint putting up with this lot and their antics. Never mind Matoya's prize student. Luckily, I know a thing or two about managing unruly younglings. If you ever need advice, don't hesitate to ask. What are you implying now? Oh my god. Ha! <laughs> 
how old is Cryo anyway? If I may, there is a rather more pressing matter we wish to discuss. What can you tell us of this duty that the Forum must fulfill? Nothing, I'm afraid. Like all humble servants of the Forum, I am sworn to secrecy. Ah, oh, it's a sworn thing, is it? You swore? Or rather, I couldn't tell you if I tried. Ah, uh, let me guess. If you tell us you got this thing in your brain that's going to inject your thing into a chemical, and then you're going to go... Our duty is of the gravest importance. Furthermore, if the particulars were made public, it would incite widespread panic. As such, those entrusted with this duty have been bound by an enchantment, which prevents us from speaking of such matters without the express permission of the Forum. Okay. Work it into the law. They literally can't say it. How is that even possible? I know, right? <laughs> it's been some time since I last gave a lecture. Please, take a seat. Oh, no. <laughs> ah, this takes me back. What? My professors never used to do that. It's much better than them already. <clears throat> we shall begin by reviewing the fundamentals of etherology. The ether, which imbues us with life, can be categorized into three forms. Two are of the incorporeal sort, the soul and the memory. Can anyone tell me the third? Oh, objects, physical objects. Corporeal ether. Yes, very good. This is the form with which the layman is most familiar. Mm -hmm. Consumed by even the simplest of daily activities and replenished by the food and drink that sustain us, this form of ether is in constant flux. It's so interesting that they call it all ether because E equals MC squared, right? There's technically a conversion between energy and matter, and that's what they're doing. By calling like both energy and matter the same thing, this is actually like a reference to the to, to the Einstein's E equals MC squared equation. <laughs> in contrast, the ether that comprises the soul is rarely subject to dramatic change. The same can be said for memory, as the two are intrinsically linked. Mm-hmm. And, and is that why you can manipulate things? Is that why magic Picture exists? the soul as paper, and memories as words written upon it. Welcome to the... Hi. Wait, wait, wait. I, I need to know. I need to know. I need to know. You all see an alphabet. Oh. Welcome to the studio. Now, what would happen if that paper was doused with ink? The same type of ether as comprises the memories. Oh, you'd wash the memories. It would poof. Mm -hmm. It would blot out everything that was written. Precisely. We would be unable to recall the memories, and any activities that depend upon them would be hindered as well. In fact, this exact phenomenon was observed on a vast scale not so long ago. And what might that have been? Oh. Temporary. The Seventh Umbral Calamity. The people of Eorzea vividly recall Bahamut breaking free of the Lesser Moon and raining hellfire down upon the realm. Okay, not tempering. Oh, that! Oh my god, it's still referencing the first game. But no it's one still could seem to remember the events that followed immediately afterwards. Indeed. 
To this day, oh, we have yet to wow. determine whether it was an unintended consequence or a deliberate act. Oh my god, I can't believe they just done this. <laughs> the enchantment which binds me and the rest of the forum is based on a similar principle. And yes, it is a contravention of the Charlene prohibition against the practice of memory manipulation. So it must be serious, uh, or they're just committing crimes for the sake of committing crimes. Okay, that just shows how serious it is. So it's smudged until permission is given, i.e. the ink is removed, and then you'll literally remember what you want to say. Okay, I get it. Only Let's go. when a new member is inducted and told of our great duty are they subjected to the process. Unnecessary evil. You have my word that it would never be used to manipulate the populace. Uh, great. I should hope not. But can this enchantment be dispelled and your memories restored? If nine-tenths of our members give their approval, then the process may be reversed. Then, and only then, would we be able to speak freely to others of our sacred duty. So that's 88 out of the 99. Barring that, we must wait until we return. To the ethereal sea. Oh, dang. Well, can't we use Hydaelyn to contact some, like, contact people? For there we or will something? be purified. Or something. The blots upon our souls washed clean. And he's gonna undo it now. Ah. And our memories yeah, drift apart and dissolve. Oh. Rather defeating the purpose, I suppose. Oh. Well, you should have said that earlier. But there are those memories that are indelibly etched upon our souls, some believe. Oh, what's he going to do to the paper now? What happens after that? We are reduced to pure ether, coalesce with that of others, and create souls anew. Alternative oh, schools of thought assert souls remain whole and return to the corporeal world, reborn into another form. The end goal is the same, though. Both still theories have their proponents. Personally, I consider each equally probable. Everyone's just like so amazed. It's like, whoa. Well, I think that's enough happening. education for today. Now that I've given you some food for thought, or rather, an entire banquet. Go on, that's quick. I wanted more. And, uh, imagine he, he did it with a, a piece of paper, a pen, and a brush. <laughs> Man, if only my professors were that good. I would remind you that although I'm unable to assist you with certain matters, the resources at my disposal may still be of use to you. I'll arrange for you all Great. to be given the run of phenomenon. Of course, as associate to our alumni and the students of Baldessian, this privilege is extended to you as well, my friend. Ah, that's nice. We're just oh, using our connection. And I suggest you speak with Ki Aliapo. She's well known among the artisans of Charlian, and her network of contacts may prove useful in your search for knowledge. I wish you all the best in your pursuits, wheresoever they may take you. No, Mountain Dew, come back. <laughs> I hope that was him chuckling, because otherwise that's very, very... <laughs> Yeah, been granted the run of phenomenon. If your game Kialipo would put your artistry to good use. Oh, that was that that was quick. Um, I'll check it out. Um. Oh well, that was quick. I'll check it out later. Wait, Peter Cheska copper. Oh, five twenty-five already. Well, that's given me much to mull over. I feel as though we're one step closer to understanding the forum's true motives and the mysteries of life itself, for good measure. <laughs> It's funny. I came here with the intent of expressing my gratitude, only to leave more in debt to them before. 
I have a feeling his friendship and support will be a great boon to us in days to come. Oh no, don't give him death flags, Cryo. No, no, Cryo. Don't do it. No death flags. No, 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 no. Don't kill Mountain Dew. And on that note, let's head back to the annex. Perhaps on the way, you could better acquaint yourself with Kialiopo, as the scholar suggested, while I share our findings with Raha. Uh, Alright, we're going to find out what that does anyway. I see uh, someone else is here taking the lecture. It's a very good lecture, man. I understood everything. This music's so good. It's so freaking good. Ah, welcome back. From what I hear, your trip to the student proved most educational. While you're away, I received word from my fellow scions. As expected, news of the warning sales was met with much joy. Preparations are now underway to bring the leadership of the Grand Company of Eorzea and the Eastern Alliance together to determine a way forward. Our friends have asked that we bring the scales in our possession to Limlong. Alright. We could do that. So the time has come for us to go on the offensive. It's too early to say for certain, but that does seem to be the way the winds are blowing. I do know we're going to be heading to Garlemort after this, so yeah. We're going to do the thingy thingy Garlemort. I for one can say have no reason to oppose such a plan, but let's see what awaits us in Vilbrand. Let's start by getting the skills out of storage. Give me a hand with you, Estinian. Oh, cat! I can't see anything. Oh man, there's a cat. I don't want to pet it. God damn it, it didn't want to be pet. It's just outside the window staring at me. There's a cat. Ah, uh, it's a neighbor's cat. I think it's new. I've never seen it around until, like, very recently. It's still there. It's still there. It's just, like, sitting there, watching. It's being cute. Anyway. <laughs> I didn't realize these crates were so heavy. I shouldn't complain, though. Reacher and the alchemists of the great work put their heart and soul into each and every one of these scales, so you must treat them with the utmost care. Fair enough. Are you not coming with us? As much as I would like to escape the forum's watchful gaze, I have little choice but to stay behind. Oh, why? We're already on thin ice, and if I, in my capacity as our official representative, were found to be consorting with foreign powers, well, you can imagine how that would go. No, it'll leave me on potato behind. I shall remain here and do my utmost to avoid ruffling any more feathers as I await word from Master Matoya and our other allies. With luck, we'll soon have good news of our own to share. Alright. The good news being that we will go to Garlemald? The tide is about to turn. I can feel it. To Limlom! Ah, I was told to expect you. As you may or may not be aware, the Admiral is at present entering the Elder Seeds here. Entering- Oh my god! <laughs> Entertaining the Elder Seeds here and the Sultana. Three of the most powerful women in the world in one room. Do you need a moment to prepare or shall I show you to them? Uh, sure. That would be a capital idea. I hope I didn't just skip a chapter break. That would be very awkward. My apologies for calling you away from Charlie and at such short notice. On the contrary, we are honored and grateful, and pleasantly surprised to be joined by such a seen company. It was only right that this discussion be conducted in person. We are locked in a war of attrition. Our forces struggle to contain the threat posed by the towers, and it's only a matter of time before we are overwhelmed. Well, luckily for you, I have just the thing. Victory will only be claimed through decisive action, and we have taken the initiative to set the wheels in motion. It's reassuring to learn that we are all in accord. But might I ask what your plan entails? Oh, that's easy. It hinges entirely on the warding scales and our ability to utilize their potential to the fullest. During your time in Charlie, and the allied nations have been engaged on separate fronts with no end in sight. To make matters worse, a surge in abductions of kobolds, Sahagin, Exo, and Ananta have given rise to an increasing number of primals as well. Oh god. But your triumph in Razat Khan has given us cause to hope once more. The time has come to free ourselves of this menace. And it is you, the signs of the Seventh Dawn, who have shown us the way. 
while the bulk of the forces will continue to hold the Telofroy at bay, will dispatch our finest to strike the enemy's heart. Garland mode. Okay. These brave few will be the Elzabad contingent. Alright. Apparently it's the biggest map ever. To think such progress has been made in so short a span. Exactly. Its objectives are twofold. The first is to provide aid to the people of Garlemald. As previously reported, countless Imperial soldiers and civilians have been tempered, robbed of their free will. They serve the Telophorus every whim without question. They too are victims. It is our duty to deliver them from their suffering, not for strategic or political gain, but because it's the right thing to do. I do not ask that we set aside the decades of conflict and conquest, that we simply choose to forgive and forget. I ask only that in choosing to remember, we do not also forsake our compassion and morality. Without that, there can be no reconciliation. Only death without end feels like Splunky too. Sometimes, doesn't it? Aye, on that we can all agree. Our second objective is the colossal tower that Thancred and Uriel J observed in the capital. Though its purpose remains unclear, there's reason to believe the smaller spires are merely a precursor of what's yet to come. Until the Tower of Zot was toppled, we'd fail to make any headway. Though the same could be said of the Telophoroi. They're constantly they're sadly in no rush to press further into our lands. I'd wager the spire's primary purpose is to divide and keep us occupied, while they work towards our annihilation. Ugh. This would appear to be substantiated by a shoreless analysis of the tower's influence on ethereal currents. Based on her observations inside the Tower of Zart, the spires siphon ether from the land, consuming it to maintain their form. However, they draw forth far more than is required for this task alone, and we know that's because they're actively siphoning it to power up something else, like Fan Daniel was saying earlier. The excess of ether remains unaccounted for, but we can be sure it's not being harnessed for our benefit. I could do a pirate voice for Moab, but like... <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me in the least if it was being redirected to the largest fire in the capital. There's a logic in that. Regardless, once we have uncovered the truth, we'll bring their schemes crashing down along with their infernal towers. Oh, that's all well and good. But what would you have us do? I assume it's more than handling over the scales and be on our way. We want you and your skills to join the Ilzabad contingent. Of course you do, yes. Consider it an official request from both the Grand Company of Eorzea and the Eastern Alliance. Do you accept? Wait, why don't we see, um, Hien? Where's Hien? Eastern Alliance. Hien. Perhaps you should be the one to answer that. Uh, oh god, they're all good. Okay, you have to remember that amidst all the chaos, there's actual people in Garlemald who don't want any of this. Couldn't have put it better myself. Oh, music's going up. It's getting hyped. Ishola, Thancred, and Uriandre have already pledged their support and are on their way to meet the rest of the contingent. They're positive you'll come to the same decision as they did. <laughs> Luckily for all involved, their prediction was correct. Once you have delivered the warning scales to Alamigo, Alamigo! The contingent will embark on its journey to Ilzaban. What about Doma? Rauban and Old Emmerich are overseeing pre uh, preparations, so I suggest you make yourselves known upon arrival. Pack warm clothing, furs and the like. Without it, the cold will do you in before the Telopro is so much as draw steel. As for us, we'll keep the enemy busy while you're gone. They're not the only ones who can create a diversion. Now go, saving the knowledge it always will be as you left it, or better, upon your return. And there we go, off to Garland. Oh, it's not, it's not 999 to go to the Alamigo Quarter anymore. Ah, the wondrous return. You've been busy bringing down a tower and producing the keys to destroying the rest of them. You should be proud. Those warning scales of yours are what's made this whole venture possible. Will you and Lord Emmerich be leading the contingent? You know, lends a hand? Regrettably, no. Our role is to organize the various delegations into a cohesive unit. Once we have seen you all off, let's back to our respective posts. Oh. We dare not neglect our duties for too long, lest our defensive efforts fall into disarray. Well, I mean, I guess if Ravon didn't lend us a hand, he'd have none left for himself, will, will he? Mm. Oh my god, this music! Uh -huh.
this. Okay, there we go. And just between us, there was a fair amount of opposition to the formation of the Oaths of our Contingent. Really? The very suggestion that we send out some of our finest troops behind enemy lines to render aid onto the Guardians has made me rather unpopular in certain quarters. Hmm. Huh, feasible. You just keep doing what you're doing, man. Some people will agree with it, some people won't. Sadly not, but I do my best. Truth be told, I'd much rather be at your side charging into the fray. Alas, I have battles of my own to fight, where words may serve me better than any blade. Mm. Uh, I hate to say it, but Lord Emmerich's struggles mirror my own. For the time being, the best I can offer you is the peace of mind from knowing Eorzea is, is in safe hands. As you fight the good fight in Elzabad, I and the other commanders will do what we can to convince the naysayers that our course is just. Thank you, both of you. Ah, we meet again. Is that here? No. Oh, that's Gaius. And, um, Max Maximilian? Maxime? Max. I just know his name is Max. Word of your exploits travels quickly. From what I gather, the protective talismans you obtained led to the formation of this expeditionary force. My contribution on this occasion is but a minor one, that being the information I've shared with Maxima. That's his name, Maxima. For the sake of the people of Garlemald, may the fates be on your side. So you're not coming with us. Strange, I thought you'd have a stake in this. I do. The Tilofroi have laid waste on my homeland and enslaved my people. But though every motive of my being cries for vengeance, I cannot be the one to deliver it. My presence alone would place the entire mission in jeopardy. Yeah, because you used to be a villain and you got a redemption arc, and that's a nice way to get out of your impending death that we all know is coming as a redeemed villain. Good try, but I don't think you're getting out of it that easily. And this is just me speculating, but we'll see what happens. I stand accused of murdering Emperor Varus and plunging Garlemald into chaos. Were I to travel with the Elsaba contingent, you'll give my countrymen ample cause to question our motives. Dude, Xenos did that. He was freaking framing you? God damn. Uh, spoilers. Conversely, those who believe me innocent may instead celebrate the return of a former legatus and attempt to raise me into a position of leadership, further destabilizing the region and complicating the contingent's mission. Fair enough. Whether I am branded a villain or hailed as a hero, I would only hinder your efforts. Well, I doubt they'll be pleased to see the champion of Eorzea set foot on Guardian soil. A fair point. But so long as you refrain from announcing your arrival to all and sundry, the average person should have no inkling as to your identity. Although your titles and deeds are common knowledge, only a select few would recognize you on sight alone. Perhaps one day they will learn that the warrior of light is not a demon to be feared, but a woman deserving of their trust. Ah. Oh. In light of Geyser's rather unique circumstances, I instead will assume the role of your guide. Okay, we're taking Maxima with us. Go on, Max. Though I may have defected for political reasons, my love for Garnemold endures. I would stop at nothing to protect her and her people. It's really humanizing the entire guardian sort of aspect like before we knew anything about it it's like oh everyone's there must be like screwed everyone's there must be everyone there must be mad and then we get like these two people and they've really like sort of made it more relatable and it's like just just the awareness that not everyone in like a bad country is technically bad or shares the opinion of the most vocal that being the top government why am I talking about this? <laughs> well said. Might I ask you to escort our friends inside? Like, I, I am going to use the example of Nazi Germany. Like, even people in Germany weren't happy with what their leaders were doing. Like, not necessarily everybody in the country is represented by the views of their government, which is kind of sad now that you think about it. You have to remember, there's actual people in Garlemald who don't want any of this. But then you can't hope to represent everyone. It's like the most you can do, the best you can do, how big your majority is, because everyone is going to have their own opinions. And this is going on a tangent, so let's get back to the. <laughs> you might even bump into an old acquaintance or two. And if I don't see you again, then you depart. May the fury guide and protect you. All of you. Well, that, my friend, is a capital. 
idea. I hope we do get into Carnival. Best of the best. Seems like we are going into Carnival before the chapter ends. That's all. Have you meet your new traveling companions? New traveling companions? Oh, and a gift. The other members of the Ilzabar contingent are gathered in the Royal Palace. I shall inform them of your arrival, so please make your way inside as soon as you're ready. Very well. That is what I will do. Ah, the remaining members of the Sirens, your friends and most of the Ilzabar contingent, await you within. Should I need to see you through? Yes, please. You go ahead and do that, even though you technically can't move, and this is just a cutscene transition. Well, let's see then. It's been a while since we've been in here. Last time. By the 12. It's voice. Oh my god, yes. Last time, freaking. They. Lee's tried to do a thing. And then. Lakshmi was just like. No. Nah. No, it was actually it was saying Danta. They, they, they ended up like summoning Lakshmi, and that's a really fun fight. Oh my god, that's a lot of people. Oh, that's Lee's. And that's. What's his name? And that's. That is not Horse Refund. Don't try and. No, no, no. That is not Horse Glad Refund. Glad you could join us. I hope you don't mind, but we went ahead and started without you. Uh, that guy reminds me of Horse Refund, but I know he's not friggin' Horse Refund. I don't even know his name anymore. As oh. you can imagine, <laughs> our traveling companions were eager to become acquainted. Tis a rare thing indeed to see such a diverse and talented group of individuals oh. assembled for a single purpose. God we damn. fight not only for the sake of Eorzea, but for the entire world, including the people of Garlemald. Much rides on the efforts of the Ilzabad contingent. Isn't that the white mage look guy thing? <laughs> oh my god, the guy's doing push-ups. And I don't know anybody else in the background, and I probably shouldn't know anybody else in the background. Who is this guy? I don't remember this guy. Oh no. Indeed, which is why I am glad to Lucia. find myself in the company of many trusted comrades. Yourselves included. Oh, she's Emmerich's um, protege or whatever. And she's apparently the sister of Gaius' subordinate, Julia, I think. Julia something, something, something. I think that's her sister's name. Lucia. I have come at the behest of Lord Emmerich, who has honored me with the role of Ishgard's representative. And for the good of all nations, not least my former homeland. I am determined to see this mission through to its end. We have a hard road ahead of us, but walk it we shall, together. Oh, shut up. Uh, this is the eye of the soul. Uh, how many people are gonna die? We too welcome this opportunity to work together once more. Stop it. I have faith that if there is a way to resolve this conflict, we will find it. Stop it. People are gonna die, and I'm gonna get sad. Stop it. Uh, keep going. Allow me to introduce you to the rest of our company. That would Everyone, be great. If I may have your attention. Okay, right, listen up. Now, who the heck are they? Yeah, he is one of the white mage um people from uh, Thingy. It was like Kane Senna's like brother. Might I ask you to speak first? Oh. If I must. Yeah. I am Arun Senna, spokesman for the Gridanian delegation. Here on behalf of my esteemed sister, the Elder Seedseer, we shall provide mm -hmm. support and protection to those in need during our time in Garlemald. Now that I think of it, he kind of looks like Ron Weasley if you just trimmed his hair like back a little bit. To that end, I am joined by healers selected by the Conjurer's Guild, with the Order of the Twin Adder's Finest serving as our escort. Nice. Of course, with an experienced white mage such as yourself oh. accompanying us as well, those requiring more involved treatment will be in safe hands. Raya O sends her regards, by the way. Oh my god. He's only saying this because we're level 80 white mage, I think. But I'm going to play black mage, so I don't know what you're talking about. Suppose I'd better say my piece. Sigurd, uh, that's his name. Wait, I know you. What? The name's Sigurd, in case you've forgotten. Truth be told, I'd rather you had forgotten. I did forget, so that's anyway, fine. Anyway, the Admiral asked Captain Hillfear to send his best, and for whatever reason... He picked me. Ah, oh, from the Limson Pirates. That's a long time ago. 
course, if I'd refused, I'd be the laughing stock of the bloody executioners and my reputation's taken enough of a key haul in as it is. But more importantly, like any pirate worth his salt, I know when you're staring down a storm, you got to trust in the commander of your ship. And what's your relation to Graha? So if the Admiral wants us to go to Garlemald, not for plunder and glory, but a promise of peace in our time, then that's what we'll do. Nice voice acting, very nice. Since we all know how much the Empire loves its steel, we thought we'd bring along a few smiths to make the most of it. Give mm. them a pile of scrap and they'll cobble together anything you fancy. Of course, nice. just like the Gradanians, we got fighters of our own. We might have come with a more constructive purpose in mind, but we're more than capable of cracking skulls, believe you me. <laughs> oh, well, you're nice. certainly raring to go, but then again, so are we. The most dependable warriors of Uldar and Alamigo have assembled at the Sultana and General Aldin's behest. Oh, that's, um, Coco, whichever one if it is. If Garlemald has truly fallen, then the whole place is likely to be crawling with Telophoroi. We'll need plenty of troops to clear and hold a path for others to follow. Is that Coco Baika? Coco Bigo? Coco, Coco, ba Coco Bana? Coco That's where Coco we come in. Naturally, Marshal Tarrapin and I will be leading from the front. Ah. Lelen. Lelen? What's that? What's that saying? Pip, pip, it's been pip, some time pip, since pip. I last saw you in your element on the battlefield. From what I've heard, you've become pretty fearsome yourself. Master Matoya? The Avatar of Destruction? It's like so quiet and they're like seven. Lees and the seven Lalafels. <laughs> With comrades like these, I know we'll succeed, no matter what awaits us. Because the plot demands it. And then it. we might finally get a oh, chance to enjoy a good long rest. But until then, let's give it our all. Lees and the five Lalafels, not seven. God damn it, you're missing two. Cry or Tataru, where the hell are you? <laughs> oh no, that's number six in the corner. As for Ishgard, we Temple Knights have come in force to uphold our nation's commitment to the peace and welfare of our allies. The bitter cold of Garlemald is a formidable enemy in of itself. Our experience fighting in ice and snow will prove invaluable in the days ahead. Oh! Garlemald is Eorzean Russia! Ah, I get it now. <laughs> oh, wow. Accordingly, I have been designated commander of the Ilzabad contingent. I will do all in my power to provide you with the leadership and guidance you require. For Maza Garlimald. Uh, uh, whatever. God damn. The four high houses, <laughs> House Hylinart foremost among them, have arranged for a host of machinists to join us on our mission. Their knowledge of Imperial Magitech is sure to be a great boon. They will address any problems of a technical nature together with mm. the smiths of Limpsa Lomitsa. All right. There is another awaiting introduction. Another? Oh. Lord Emanolain! Oh. Oh my god. Ah, uh, yes. Emanolain uh, de Fortan, at your service. Oh my Though, god. Though, lest there be any misunderstanding, I should stress that I've not become a fearsome warrior while you were away. Rather, far from it, actually. My brother, in his infinite wisdom, decided this would be an excellent chance to make something of myself. Oh, and fight for world peace and all that. Ah, uh, it's just a, it's just an afterthought. But, should the opportunity arise for a spot of ballroom dancing, I will be your twinkle-toed gentleman of light. I'm sure he's going to pivot all to the, uh, to the story. <laughs> um... I dare say your fancy for what may all that stands between us and certain do. <laughs> Huzzah! I cannot wait to regale on a roi with my tales of daring do. Oh. I believe that concludes introductions for the grand company of Eorzea. Oh, Ishgard is Final Fantasy France. Ah. Oh, I see. Eorzea is meant to be Britain, then. No. No, 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 no. Um, no, 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 no. Uh, moving on. 
Our allies from the Eastern Alliance were due to arrive some time ago, but it would appear they have been delayed. Wait, it could be. It could be because of thingy. Um, you got Old Dar, you got Limlom, and you got Gridania. That could be England, Scotland, and Wales. I think it is. Gridania is Wales, and then Limlom is maybe Scotland because I don't know Sc Scottish pirates, and then Old Dar is England. That, that is very confusing. Or, or maybe I'm just biased because that's where I am right now. Um, <laughs> I don't know, man. Would that be the Shinobi of Doma? Oh, actually, they've been oh. tasked with relaying messages back and forth between the various Eastern nations. According to Lord Hien, however, an equally capable company of warriors has been sent in their stead. Oh, the Lupins! The I almost said the, the Lupari, freaking Doctor Who. Out of my way, you preening fool! Is it not the the wolf people? Oh my God! <laughs> okay. I was not expecting Serena. But, uh, Forgive it'll us do. for coming late. We are the delegates of the Eastern Alliance. Serena, and you've brought company. Ah oh, man, everyone's here. For battle and blood we come, as a step is sorely lacking in both. No towers befoul our lands, so we marched on those of Doma. Only to find them beyond our reach. Right, man, should have bought more supplies. But now our thirst for slaughter will be slaked. No quarter to the enemy! Sadu Hatun, no. Okay. We go to make peace with the Iron Men, not war. Kind of both. Depends on who you're talking about. Warriors of the Steppe, we've heard many tales of your bravery. We welcome you as allies. And these other ones you have brought are. Magni, right? Oh, no. Members of the Dalmascan resistance group, Lente's Tears. Oh, it's a Hrath. And the Bosjan resistance. Bosjan resistance. I have not done Bosja. Oh, God. This is, this is going over my head right now. Between them, they have a wealth of experience in espionage and are particularly adept at infiltrating Imperial facilities, which is fortuitous since Garlemald's domain is so vast that I could never hope to handle reconnaissance duties all by myself. Oh, man. Dalmasca, Bosia, Alamigo. All lands which have suffered the tyranny of the Empire. I would never presume to question your motives. Nevertheless, I must reiterate that our goal <sighs> is to aid the victims of the Tilophoroi, the common folk of Garlemald. Yes, don't kill the common folk. And they did nothing wrong. they are wrong. victims, make no mistake. Mm. Though I understand that many may struggle to see them as such. Mm -hmm. You're more right than you know. For every one of us that answered the call, there were a dozen that refused. Ah, we don't need them anyway. Not only in Alamigo, but everywhere we went. And who could blame them? The Empire's always been the enemy. That's the problem when you put a late... But uh, after seeing a... what we've seen... Fighting and working against and with Garleans. There's no denying the simple truth. You, you can't say Garleans are the enemy. You have to label a specific person that you want to target. Because because like if you put an entire country, that that's way too generic. Now I can understand why the World Health Organization renamed the virus. They're just same, people. Same thing. No different from you or I. They've got their share of liars and murderers, but so do we. So do we all. For Dola who once swore mm. herself to Garlemald, has proven herself a trusted ally time and time again. Every Eorzean here knows Sid Garland, the Sid. Imperial Defector who shared with us countless technological wonders. Sid. Oh, Sid Maxima, her. who stands with us today, tried to reform Garlemald from within and make peace with Joma. Man, Maximus actually doing what Asahi faked doing. So you can believe me when I say that every fighter here understands and accepts that the Imperials are not monsters and are deserving of help. Or at least that they were able to put aside their feelings for the greater good. It won't be easy. Mm. But we're all determined to make this world a better place. Quality over quantity. That's, that's fine. We didn't need those other dozen who... What lingering quality. concerns I may have had were clearly unwarranted. I agree with everything you said wholeheartedly. Well, this is an arrangement of the... Then we are in accord. 
Now, let us review our strategy. What, what theme is that? Da, 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 da. Oh, oh crap, that's the Stormblood copyright thing. Oh god, please no. Uh, it's, a, it's a different rearrangement. Don't, don't copyright claim me. Oh god. To reach the Galian capital in northern Ilzabad, we must cross the central mountain range. Fortunately, Garland Ironworks Sid. can provide aerial transport, sparing Sid. us this most treacherous part of our journey. Sid. However, attempting to fly any closer to Garlemald would attract the attention of the Telophoroi. As they appear mm -hmm. to have seized control of the majority of the Imperial military, we must assume that includes its fleet. In addition, Garlemald possesses devices that can interfere with airship navigational systems, further discouraging an airborne approach. Just going through the front door blaster. Open. Given the circumstances, the closest we dare deploy our contingent is an area between the range and the capital, the Magna Glacias. From there, we okay. must travel the rest of the way on foot. We will also need to bring the airships with us to ensure we can withdraw with haste. Although much of the terrain will be blanketed in snow, we should be able to make use of local roads and shipping facilities. Sounds good. Sounds the vast good. ice field will afford us an unobstructed view of the surrounding area. Nice. On the other hand, it will also allow others to easily spot us. Of course. So it is imperative that we only make camp in positions where we can easily defend ourselves. And the airships, which must be kept safe at all costs. Mm -hmm. We cannot account for every hole possibility, a, so we must corner. be prepared to think on our feet. We will be tested. Sorely tested, I expect. But for our homes and for our people, and a people not our own but in need, we will succeed. God damn it, shut up. You're gonna Spare die. Spare no gonna effort in your preparations. Once we depart, there is no turning back. I mean, what about the etherite? I mean, can't, can't, can't they just use the etherite? Everybody can use the etherite, right? They, they even got the etherite in the main story. What about the etherite? Let's just use the etherite. Oh my god. Oh, it's Kokobuki. Okay, well, I knew it was one of those five. Besides the delegates assembled here, the Amoja and several other tribes offered to send troops of their own. Unfortunately, due to their physiology, many would struggle simply to survive in the harsh climate of Ilzabad. Oh, right, because they're accustomed to the desert. It's like taking a deep sea fish and just like ringing it up in like five seconds and it goes something like that or it explodes i think it explodes because it's used to the pressure and then suddenly there's no pressure so everything is like pop now they would also prove tempting targets for adoption by the telophoroi all things considered they can better aid the course by bolstering our defenses in Orsia, though their eagerness to do more has to be noted we few shall have to suffice now we embark we must distribute the warning scales to our comrades care to do the honors um i'm not the one who made them but or if you insist oh five people here you go one for you literally one for you just one so these are the famed warding scales enough for me and my men i see I, okay i guess it is a box of, of 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 okay i myself am especially grateful for this opportunity to visit distant lands i wish to follow in the footsteps of master atoa and learn all there is to learn of this star we call home oh right because they never leave gradania them being here is like oh my god you're actually freaking here you never usually leave gradania to do anything indeed that's the primary reason i volunteered to join the expedition to journey outside the twelve zone much less enter into imperial territory it's a rare privilege afforded a paddle not that I'm tagging along to see the sights. The Guardians would benefit from my healing magics, as would our comrades should fighting break out. Should fighting break out? Should? I uh, you got something for us? Wow, why does he sound cockney? Feels like he's cockney -ing. Oh, Limsa is it's England, not Oda. Limsa is England because it's got a navy and it's got pirates and it's got fleets. Or maybe it's meant to be like Limsa is the entirety of Britain. I, I don't know, man. They got cockney accents, they're pirates. Edward Teach. Limsa is England. There we go. Ah, them scales everyone's been talking about. Pretty little things, aren't they? I think they'll be worth a kill or two when this is all over. We'll hold on to them for now. And one more thing. No, we all think. Huh? Why didn't they say Why didn't they say eyes? Why didn't they say Why didn't they send Why didn't they say send... send... They send eyes. Oh my god. Why didn't they send eyes are instead? Bugger if I know. Or the Admiral Captain Hilbert told me. So they needed someone to help save God the future. Here I am. Can't say they haven't got a sense of humor. Of course, some of you might be wondering what good a pirate is on dry land. In the middle of a sun and snow of all places. Well, me and my crew will do whatever needs doing. So let's set sail. However the saying goes on airships. Uh, well, technically, if you really, really wanted to, you can melt a giant patch of snow and then turn it into a lake and then shoot things from there like, <laughs> like balloons. That is set of warning scales, that's why. No, I don't know what they look like. Yep, here's one singular 
warning scale. Not about sort of having just one singular scale. Wow, look at these. Even a neighbor like me can tell they're bursting with ether. All the better to fend off the tempering waves. Is that the right up? Anyway, these will give us one less thing to worry about, which just leaves the other mountain of whatever else is waiting for us in Garnival. Only one way to find out, eh? And that was not, I marched through all seven hells if it gives me a chance to put Xenos back in the grave where he belongs. Warning sales for the Ashkanian delegation, I take it. Yes, one singular. Many thanks. These talismans may prove to be the deciding factor in the battles to come. I find myself conflicted by this foray into Garlemald to send back the Empire to infiltrate Ishgard, only to throw in my lot with those whose secrets I was supposed to be stealing. And now I need a mission to save the countrymen I betrayed, but that's doubtless why I was chosen by Lord Emmerich. He would have me put my extensive knowledge of former ties to good use. I will not disappoint him. Oh my god, look at the shadows! For the future of Ishgard, Garlemald, and the world at large, I will lead us to victory. Oh, that was Magni, with the Mole champions of the Nardim and the Dothal having sent so many here. I had thought the defender step in their absence, and I would have done so were it not for my meddling stepbrothers. They urged me to grant our allies the sun's might, that his radiance may deliver them unto victory. Though I must tolerate the presence of this federal Dothali dog as first amongst my brothers, I could do no less than accept this challenge. My deeds will become the stuff of legends. Maybe that's how he, he would say it. We had her be cold in Garnival, so we came prepared. Oh, that explains the new outfits, right? Oh, the talismans. You have to keep these close at all times, yes? Yep. Don't do, uh, whatever that elephant lady did. Don't do that. I don't know, put it somewhere. Literally putting it up your butt might be a very good idea right about now. I'm not even kidding. Like, they can't make you drop it if it's, like, somewhere, up, like, up your butt. I mean, you'll get infections and maybe you'll die, but, I mean, you know, you might last long enough to do something significant. Uh, I will see that no one misplaces ass. Ah, and before I forget, I have a message from Tien. I actually, you know, it might just be better to sew them onto your robes or something, onto your clothes, but, you know. In distant lands and times of strife, together stand, together fight, in darkness shines the light of life. That's eight syllables, that's not a haiku. I hope I've done his worst justice. Dorma, like much of Othard, has been plagued by the towers. Yet while he could not be here, he wished to express his shared conviction. Ah, they couldn't get the voice out of a Hien. Crap. Hien and Yugiri labor without rest to unite the people. And with their aid, will we keep the enemy at bay. And we of the Steppe and the Eastern Alliance will repay their efforts by ending this war. If they kill off Serena, don't kill off Serena. Serena doesn't deserve to die. Do you have a warning skill for me too? Oh yeah, just an afterthought. Maxima exists. Thank you for this, and for going to such incredible lengths for the sake of my people. Though I have little to offer in return, I would impart some advice if I may. You have been told by many to wear the cold of Ilzabad, and I cannot stress enough that this is no token warning. I'll be distributing specially made warming tinctures, courtesy of the alchemist guild, but understand that they are no substitute for proper protection. I leave the provision of said protection to your discretion. Now, let us proceed to the Alamegan quarter. While you make your final preparations, I will have the pilots ready the airships. Very nice. Oh, cutscene, here we go. Oh no, it's just a teleport. Okay. Oh man, everyone's here. And we have to talk to Alpha. Now there's a cutscene. All right. This is our last chance to make ready before we set forth. And the voice acting is so freaking good. You needn't worry about Urian Jay and I. We still have what we wore in Garlemond before. Asinian claims to be quite warm and toasty beneath his armor, and since he spent a fair bit of time abroad recently as well, I have no reason to doubt his words. Most of the others will be borrowing Grand Company sock. The rest of you could do likewise, I suppose, provided you're not overly concerned with style. Hmm. Not to put too fine a point on it, but I wouldn't be seen dead in one of those ridiculous overcoats. Uh, if only I had time to find something to my liking. Hark! Is that the cry of the science in need of a tailor, I hear? Wait, who is that? Oh my god, it's the Taru! Yes! Of course it's the Taru, who else makes our outfits? But how? <laughs> I have my way, so yes indeed, Tataru turned into an evil demon. You thought you could sneak off to Ilzabad without telling me? Ha! Nothing escapes my notice. Didn't we leave her in, uh, Doma? <laughs> now, you will wear these garments I made for you whether you like it or not. Uh, you never cease to amaze. Uh, sure, I will actually go ahead and wear them, but why do you need a new outfit as well? Wait, are you coming with us? 
Oh my goodness, she's coming with us. What? No, no, of course not, silly. It's all in the name of fashion. Rather, the number suit of the highest quality fashion. Besides, how can I expect others to wear my creations if I've never worn them myself? Good point. Good freaking point. Ah, I did have one other thing to share. Ag Agmus and Blumwida. Oh my god, what the hell are those names? Just okay. Rogadin A and Rogadin B have finally returned from assignments in faraway lands. They'll be staying at the Rising Stones for a while to keep an eye on events throughout Eorzea. Excellent. Since they'll be running things back at headquarters, I was wondering if I could lend a hand in Charlian. Oh, why not? You can keep Crow Company in the Baldessian Annex. That would be nice. We'll have both of our best potatoes in the same spot. Yes, we'd love to have you there. And I heard uh, Rogadin A and Rogadin B did a fine job carrying on in our stead while we were lying comatose. With them in charge of the Rising Stones, we've nothing to worry about. My thoughts exactly. Also, while I'm confident you won't go collapsing again, because a certain someone shall remain nameless, isn't in a position to transport your souls to another world, if anything similarly disastrous were to happen, I would be well positioned to do something about it. Anyway, I got a few things to take care of, and then I'll make my way to Charlian. I really do hope these new clothes are enough to keep you warm in Garlemald. It's not much, but it's the only thing I can do for you, other than pray for your safe return, which I will, every day. Sending her thoughts and prayers. Right, let's not keep the contingent waiting any longer. I kind of want to see what it is, actually. Here are your winter woodies, handcrafted by yours truly. Oh, is that it? It's just a coat. Oh, I thought it was going to be an entire outfit set. Come on, it's just a coat. chapter break. Alright, I'm gonna go and just make a plate out of it. I wasn't gonna do this, but they kind of left me with no choice. 